Hello my dear friends, you are on the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 23rd of May. We can say that 23rd of May is the second or maybe the third worst day in this campaign for the Ukrainians. The first one was on the 24th of February when the Russians started their special operation or the Ukrainians and the West sources are calling this operation the war. The second worst day was the day when the Russians crossed the Seversky Donetsk River near the Izum. The third worst day in the Ukraine campaign was the day when the Papasna flower has bloomed. And today was the fourth worst day in the Ukrainian war. So let's start. I will start town by town. Liman has fallen. Tashkovka has fallen. Zolotoya has fallen. Troitska has fallen. Mironovsky has fallen. Svetlodarsk fortified area has fallen. The Ukrainians, they are retreating all over the front line. They are moving towards the more reliable position, more safe position. So let's start discuss every town by town in more details. This morning we got the news that the Russians start their shelling operation towards Liman. They bombed Liman heavily and they are bombing Liman right now. And I will remind you that Liman is located on the west north, on the east north from the Slavensk. This is the Slavensk. Slavensk and Kramatorsk is the heart of the Ukrainian arc operation. Uh, so Liman is located on the left side of the Seversky Donetsk River. This is the final bridgehead that Ukrainians hold due in the special operation on this side of the Seversky Donetsk River in this area. So today, this morning, the Russians started their shelling operation. And uh, after this preparation, after this storm operation, they started their assault. They, they started assaulting of this town. This is the picture of Liman from the satellite. You see these red things? This is the fire. This is the uh, consequences of the shelling and of the storming. According to the latest update from the front line, I know that Ukrainians left Liman and they moved towards the river. So they moved towards from Liman towards the river. As far as I understand, they're retreating. They left this town because uh, there is no way to hold this position. More than that, the local charts, local telegram channels published information that first the Russians established control over this area. So we can say that the Russians started their offensive operation from town Drobyshev. This is the Drobushev and Drobush, and as we know, the Russians established control over the Drobushev in the end of the previous week. So this is the Russian attack. They established control over this town. Later, we got the news that Ukrainians moved towards the railway station. And after that, as soon as they understood that there, is, there was no way to hold this area, they started to retreat. And they started their retreating towards Slovensk, towards the river. So as far as I understand, they are planning to cross the river on the, maybe using the pontoon bridges, maybe just on their feet. By the evening of the local time, I haven't got any information that the Liman was totally captured. Just the information that the Ukrainians retreated towards the forest. But as far as I understand, Liman has fallen. And as I told before, the main idea of the Russians in this area is to establish control over this side of the river, over this bridgehead. And as soon as they are able to do this, they will move their artillery towards the river. And after that, they will establish the fire control over the over this road, Bakhmut Road. And they will be able to start bombing and shelling Slovensk. And as you see, there's just 7 kilometers from this bridgehead towards the Slovensk. More than that, the Russians will be able to establish control over the towns among the river, like Mayanki, like Aragradok, like Mikolaevka, like Starodubivka, Piskutnikka. More than that, if they are able to establish control over the Liman, and I think that maybe 
this evening or maybe tomorrow morning we will receive the information that Russia did that they will be able to cut another group that located in Svetogorsk and these guys they won't be able to escape this area anymore and they will be encircled because there are more attack and more offensive operation towards Bogorodichne and as you can see it's like almost a cauldron but I think that these guys they will retreat as well because there is no reason to hold this area anymore this is the Liman area and this is the operation that is going right now. This is the Liman area that located on the north from the Slavensk. The next town I announced was the Toshkivka. According to the Russian sources, they marked this area with this icon. And they might mark this area with the note that the clearing operation has ended. So the Russians, the Russians moved from Nizhnya towards Toshkovka, established control, and now they're saying that the Russians are somewhere here, right in front of this road, R6 road, that leads from Zolotoya Cauldron towards Lisichansk agglomeration. So we can say that the Russians established control over this area, and now they have total fire control over this road. And we can say that the Ukrainians that located in this area has no longer any possibility to retreat from this area using this road towards their, toward their castle, Lysychansk agglomeration. More than that, more news is coming from the south of this cauldron, from the town Zolotoya. This is Zolotoya. This area also has fallen. The Russians established control and they took control over these trenches, over this fortified area dot located on the south. So we can say that they cracked the toughest nut in this area. So this fortified area is under the Russians. So let's update this map according to this information. So we can see that the Russians are moving from every single direction. There were no update from the uh, north of the Papasta flower from this area. Just the one thing that we need to mention, that the Russians established control over the west part of Kamushovaha and west end town Viktorovka. More than that, somewhere in this area, in Kamushovaha, a lot of Ukrainian soldiers surrendered. More than that, the Russians are attacking towards Bilogorivka. Not the Bilogorivka that located on the north, we discussed this Bilogorik many times. This is the area where the Russians were trying to establish the another front line, but they were defeated there. This is another Bilogorovka. This is the Bilogorovka that located on the road between between um, Bakhmut and Lysychansk. So this is the road of life. This is the part of this is uh, like part of the road of life. And the Russians are moving there. More than that. They announced that they have already established the fire control over this road and as you can see there is not very much from the territory that under Russian control and this road. It's like 6 km but we can split in half because this is like the edge border so it's like 3 km. So we can say that there is no way for the Ukrainians to use this road anymore. And let's don't forget about the territory in this area that is also under the Russian control. And first of all I'm talking about the town Vladimirovka and Novokamenka. This area is under Russian control and the Russians are also attacking from Vladimirovka towards Solidar and there is also established control over this road. Uh, more than that, Ukrainians are bringing here in Solidar more and more forces to establish some defense area here because if Ukrainians are losing Solidar, it will be a very bad story for them. They won't be able to hold Bakhmut no longer if they will lose Solidar. And now let's talk about one of the most important piece of news that came today, this morning. As I told you a few days ago, the Russians established, first the Russians established control over the town Novozvanivka. The next day we got the news, we got the piece of news that the Russians established control over some part of Troitska. And this morning, from the very morning, we got the information that the Russians established control over Vazdvizhenka. And later, yesterday, we got the information that the Ukrainians blown this bridge.
And this morning, somewhere at noon, the Russian sources announced that they established control over the Mironov scheme. So during these days, the Russians established a lot of control over this territory, and this area was very for powerful and very fortified. First of all, there are a lot of important uh, plants like like um, energy power energy plant, and as you can see, this is a very nice place to prepare their defense and fortified area. There are a lot of native barriers like these lakes and so on. But because of that fact that the Russians established control over Papast and started their offensive operation in the back of Ukrainians that located in Svetlodarsk, they were forced to leave this area towards Bakhmut. So Ukrainians retreated from this area towards Bakhmut. And I must say that, of course, it sounds not very good for the Ukrainians that they lost a lot of territories in Ukraine just for one day. But one of the most important things that you should know that it wasn't something like a cauldron. It wasn't something like a total defeated, defeating or collapsing. In, may, in most cases, it was like an order from the command center to retreat. And it's very good for the Ukrainians. They're learning. They're learning this uh, war. And they understand that uh, to retreat is not a very bad situation. Because if you're retreating and if this retreating is under control, it may be very big be benefits for the Ukrainians. You're not losing soldiers. Uh, the spirit of your soldiers is on the very high level because uh, they understand that somebody is uh, care cares about you. The Ukrainians command start to care about their soldiers, and that's very good. Um, so, but the thing is that the Ukrainians they lost a very powerful bridgehead. If you take a look at this area, you see how many trenches are here, and this is the reason why they blown this bridge because this is the bridge that leads from the Russian forces, and as we know, there are a lot of BTG Russian BTG in this area and this is the straight road towards the Bakhmut and towards this first Bakhmut and then towards the Slavansk so that's why the Ukrainians they destroyed this bridge and moved towards the Bakhmut so for now as far as I understand the Ukrainians they're they're preparing a very powerful fortified area in this region on the on among these along this river I think that in a day or in a two, the Russians will complete this clearing operation of this of this bridgehead, and we're gonna see uh, the front that they establish control over this area. But this is not for today. This is the story for the next days. Now let's zoom out the map and uh, let's check the updates one more time. So this is the zoomed out map. Uh, this is Liman area. We see the progress there. The Russians has almost uh, cleared the Liman area. Uh, this is our uh, Lisich south of Lisichansk agglomeration area. Uh, some clashes near the Vrubivka. The Russians established control over the Toshkovka and they're trying to push Ukrainians in this area. A lot of updates are coming from uh, Svetlodarsk uh, area. You see how, my, how many territory the Russians established control over. So this is the progress just for almost one day. Another important thing I would like to discuss about Lysychansk agglomeration. So let's come back to Lysychansk and then we'll continue with Avdeevka. Uh, this is the uh, Lysychansk agglomeration. Let's take a look at this map. This is the map of the Institute for the St Study of War and Critical Threatness. Uh, this is the map on the 22nd of May. So it's on, like, on the evening of 22nd of May. And there are one important update on this map. And this is a concerned of the town of Voronove. This is the town. So this is the West Sources map. This is the West Sources Institute. And they, they also update the map and show some progress and so on. And as you can see, according to this map, the war is under the Russian control. So I would like to update the map according to this information. You see the war according to the West sources map and according to the Russian sources map. This town is not under the Ukrainian con the Russian control. The Russians are saying that, there are, that this town is in the gray zone. You see the front line that this town is in the gray zone. But let's update just for better understanding of the progress of the Russian progress in this area. So we can say that this territory is under the Russian. Just one thing I wanted to discuss about the Voronova. Now let's move towards Avdeevka. There are very heavy clashes in the town New York. The Russians are pushing and pushing and pushing. 
they establish control over Novosilovka, they establish control over the suburbs of New York, and they're moving and pushing Ukrainians in this area. Also, they're pushing Ukrainians in the Avdiivka industrial zone. This is New York, and this is Avdiivka. They're bombing it, and they get as much as closer to this town. M more than that, some Russian sources are saying that the Russians established control over the suburbs of Avdiivka, over some towns in this area. And this is not very good news. More updates about Avdiivka. Uh, some of you heard that two Polish battalions were moved towards Avdiivka. Uh, maybe it just talks, maybe it's true, I haven't saw any evidence or any improvements or video, but this information appeared in the day when the U Ukraine and Poland signed a lot of very interesting documents. I will tell you my opinion, I will give you my opinion. I think that yesterday Poland and Ukraine created the new confederation on the map of Europe. I think that that was the, this is confederation. The union between Poland and uh, Ukraine is confederation. First, let's discuss the things that Ukrainian authority gave to the Poland, Polish people, Polish citizens. Under the new law, Polish citizens in Ukraine will be able to to hold elected positions, like governors, mayors, to be appointed to state authorities, to the management of defense enterprises, to get access to the sacred data, to be judges. Imagine yourself, the Polish citizens are able to be judges in the territory, on the territory of Ukraine. The Polish police will have the right to monitor law and order. All these Paragraphs are very important. More than that, more than that, there is no more border between Ukraine and Poland. So we can say that there is a common border on the east. So we can say that the border with the Russian Federation is the border with Poland. And more than that, the fifth paragraph of this agreement is that the Polish police will have the right to monitor law and order. What does it mean? First of all, the Ukrainians have around 30,000 of soldiers on the border between, on the Belarusian border. They're keeping them there uh, to avoid the attack from the Belarusian side or the Russian attack from the Belarus land. So that's why they're keeping there around 30,000 of soldiers. More than that, the, uh, Zelensky announced a few days ago that there, is a, there are already 700,000 of soldiers in Ukraine. A lot of, a lot of these forces are located in the towns at the territory defense. Militia territory defense and the Ukrainians they need these forces, but they can't leave the towns because we know that if they leave the town There would be a bell gun in these towns So that's why the Ukrainians asked Poland to move their police military police towards Ukraine first of all to keep in safe the border between Belarus and Ukraine to keep in safe all the towns and to monitor the towns and that will allow Ukrainians to move all the forces they have towards the Donbass. So that's why I think that it's not just the like request of help or something like this. This is the creation of new confederation on the map of Europe. This is the confederation between Poland and Ukraine. And there would be much more laws, much more custom in this area. And we're gonna see this in a few weeks, months, or, or something like this. And as far as I understand, because of these laws and because of this new custom, I understand that situation in Donbass are very bad. They want the Poland, they want the Poland soldiers to fight with the Russians. And the losing of some authority, losing of some power, is the price that Ukrainians are ready to pay for the Poland blood on the front lines. And please don't forget that today we have an event, very interesting event. You can read the description of this event under the description of this video. A lot of interesting discussions, three channels, uh, war in Ukraine, uh, 
Politics, Defense, Asia and Military Summary. Together we will discuss the situation in Ukraine. We will, we will be able to give us some questions. And I think that we will have a lot of fun. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes. And enjoy your evening. Bye-bye.